Mr. Speaker, I rise today in honor of the upcoming holiday remembering Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. As a lifelong activist fighting for immigrant civil and human rights, and now as a member of Congress, Dr. King has been a deep and central inspiration throughout my life. His work has helped me uh, to make possible the path that I've taken from being a 16-year-old immigrant girl who came to this country by herself for college to serving now as the first woman, uh, Indian American woman elected to the United States House of Representatives. And it is the courage and the fight of Dr. King that made my journey possible. I knew of Dr. King first because of his connection to Mahatma Gandhi, a great leader from my own birth country of India. Like Gandhi, Dr. King was a once in a generation leader. Like Gandhi, the problems that Dr. King tackled were once seen as insurmountable problems, institutional barriers of race and class that seemed as if, if taken on, would topple society as we knew it. Tall walls of tradition and practice that kept our society segregated and divided. But that did not stop him from speaking out, organizing, and leading a growing movement that reminded the leaders of our country <clears throat> of the very dream that made America possible, that all men and women were created equal, and that we should be judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. Dr. King's gift was in his unique ability to bring truth, compassion, and justice together for a better future, and to remind us of how much we share even across our differences. He followed Gandhi's principles of nonviolent resistance, also known as satyagraha. Satya meaning truth, and graha meaning adherence to truth. Satyagraha then meant insistence on truth, and that is what Dr. King preached and acted upon truth about ending segregation and discrimination, truth about ending the war in Vietnam, truth about lifting up sanitation workers and ending poverty, truth ultimately that it is love and not hate that builds our character and our collective society. If Dr. King was here with us today, he would call on us to have our fight for justice and to substitute courage for caution. He would call on us to work passionately and unrelentingly for the very vision of our country that inspires so many around the world, for that more perfect union that we know is still ahead of us, for that <clears throat> society <clears throat> that remembers that we are all better off when we're all better off. Dr. King would remind us that justice is what love looks like in public. He would call on us to move into that plane of higher education, that plane of moral consciousness where we simply cannot stand by as injustice occurs around us. He would call on us to address economic inequality by raising the minimum wage and en enacting real tax reform whose benefits accrue to the masses and not to the top 1% and the wealthiest corporations. Dr. King would call on us to pass the DREAM Act and support the futures of 1.5 million young people across the country. He would call on us to expand and support the Affordable Care Act and health care for every Everyone, so that no one is one health care crisis away from bankruptcy. Our work is still to fight for justice and build that beloved community where each of us has a place to stand regardless of the color of our skin or where we live or how much money we have in our pockets. And in this beloved community, we would tackle the legacies of racism and implicit bias that we all carry with us with courage and with fortitude. We work together to build that community that inspires us and to leave a world to our children that makes us proud. And most importantly, we operate always from a place of generosity and not an abundance rather than fear and scarcity. From that jail cell in Alabama, Dr. King wrote that we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Or as the great civil rights leader, Reverend Joseph Lowry, and said to me during the immigrant workers' freedom ride, we may have come over on different ships, but we're all in the same boat now. To make a difference, 
to truly serve the people. It only takes courage and coming together as a collective. Across the aisle, across rural and urban, black, white, and brown, Dr. King showed us what that really looks like. And he died because he was compelled to stand for making a reality from a dream of what was possible only in a country as great as the United States of America. So today, as we remember and honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we remember too that if we are courageous, if we put people over politics, our actions have the power to change lives, to push that moral arc of the universe more quickly towards justice. As Dr. King said, we must make the pledge that we shall always march forward. We cannot turn back. Thank you, and I yield back.